The Boston Marathon, a day where a river of color runs through the streets of Boston. 30,000 runners from 100 different nationalities converge in an unstoppable current of runners. It's a celebration of human achievement. It's a celebration of life. There, on, just outside the public library, is a blue and yellow finish line that symbolizes the end of 26.2 miles. It's there on the street, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. The people of Boston are so proud of it. And I want to just project you guys now into the body of one of those runners as they turn and see that finish line. Your legs are screaming. They feel like they're full of glass. Your feet have been pounded so many times that it's starting to spread up your legs into your hips. Your buttocks have been chafing for 10 miles. But as you turn that left onto Boylston Street, it doesn't matter. All that hard work, all that pain, all that suffering has been worth it. You are going to make it. You throw your hands in the air. You change that grimace on your face into a smile for the finish line photo. But then suddenly, an angry metallic sound silences everything. Two bombs went off on April the 15th, 2013, at the Boston Marathon finish line. Three people were killed, including an eight-year-old boy, and tens of people had their limbs blown to pieces. Their lives changed. And for me, as a, as a boy, I can't even remember the days when I wasn't running. My mum and dad are super keen runners, and that energy and that passion spread to me and my two sisters. All five of us all ran the London Marathon all together. An absolutely amazing experience. And, and running has been, it's been my safe place. It's been my therapy. It's been the place that's built my confidence. Through it, I've found friendship, love, but most importantly, community. And on that day when the, the bombings went off, I was sitting in my kitchen in Devon with my friend Kate. And we'd just been for a run. We're in our tiny little shorts. We're drinking a cup of tea. And we're just listening to the radio. And then suddenly, the words on the radio change. And we start hearing about the bombing, about the suffering, about the death. And we didn't even know, we didn't know anyone in Boston. And, but this was our community. These were runners. And we decided right there and then we were going to do something about it. We didn't really know what we were going to do, but we came up with this idea. What if we could organize a continuous running relay from LA on the West Coast all the way over crossing the United States to Boston on the East Coast? And we'd get the American people involved and ask them to carry our baton continuously that whole journey. We had no idea how we were going to do it. My organizational skills are comparable with those of a goldfish. I went to a good example of this is I went to the club championships for triathlon. I drove um, um, an hour there. I arrived and realized I'd forgotten my bike. But not only that, I brought one of my size nine running shoes and one of my mum's size five running <laughs> shoes. It really didn't bode well. But we started simple. We broke that 3,300 miles up into 10 mile segments. We put it onto a website put it onto social media, and we hit share. And we hoped the American people were going to sign up. We were, we were working kind of 18-hour days. We were contacting as many people as we possibly could. We were contacting running clubs, media outlets. We even phoned up some businesses on the course and said, I don't suppose any of your staff like running, do they? 
And, but after three days, no one had signed up. We hadn't got any traction, and we were starting to get worried. But then on the fourth day, we got our first sign up, Ian Russell. And soon after signing up, Ian Russell sent us a, a message saying, Ian Russell reporting, ready to support and spread the word. And Ian was an art curator by trade, but for us, he quickly became, became our marketing executive. He started talking about it, he started sharing it. Someone he knew, Sandra, in LA, saw it, signed up, and wrote to us saying, I love running, I'm here to help. She knew a guy, Keith, from work. Keith signed up. He knew a guy called Paul from football. He signed up, and it continued. And every single one of these runners that signed up said they wanted to help. And, and suddenly, we've got a whole team working on it. And I think back to that first moment when Ian signed up, and I, I wonder about, would he have believed me if I'd said to him that within seven weeks of the bombings happening, we'd be setting off from LA with thousands of people already signed up, that we would create a movement that would unite a nation, that we would create a community that would change hundreds of people's lives, that four weeks after we set off from LA, the American people would have carried that baton without stopping once across the United States, and it would have arrived in Boston. And even more than that, that we would have raved, raised over half a million dollars doing so. Would he have believed me? Of course he wouldn't. But that's exactly what happened. Everything that happened was down to the community. Everyone only ran 10 miles, but together they crossed a nation. Every dollar that was raised was because we worked together. Every life that was changed was because we worked together. And I guess what I'm here to say is let's stop striving as individuals and let's start striving as a community together. Because together, we are infinitely more powerful. And I want to tell you just one story from the relay. This is Nicole, Nicole Reese. She'd been running in the marathon on April the 15th. At 23.2 miles, she turned the corner and she was met with a wall of policemen. And the policeman said to her, the marathon's cancelled, there's been an incident, and took her with the other runners into a park where they were told to wait. They had no idea what had happened. This is John Odom. And John Odom had flown over for the same marathon. He, he was standing at the finish line, there to cheer his beloved daughter in her, her, her very first marathon. Unfortunately, John was in, involved in the blasts, and he was thrown to the floor and found himself lying in a pool of wetness. He looked down, and both of his legs had been blown to pieces by the blast. And then he realized that the wetness he was lying in was his own blood. John died twice on the operating table. And if you haven't put two and two together, John is the father of Nicole, and Nicole is the beloved daughter that he'd gone to the finish line to support. It gives me goosebumps on my head just even talking about it. So, Nicole wrote to us, and she said, I've heard about one run for Boston. I'd like to get involved. The finish line holds negative memories for me, and I'd like to replace them with better ones. The last 26.2 miles of our relay across the States was the 26.2 miles of the Boston Marathon. That blue and yellow line was our, the end of our relay as well. And the last stage, we started at 20 miles into that route. And the, 
Energy was crazy. A thousand people had signed up. It was super positive, super loud. It was much more like a carnival. As we set off on the last stage towards that finish line. And when we got to 23.2 miles in, where Nicole had been pulled from the marathon, she was standing there waiting. And we were able to pass her the baton. And she set off with a thousand runners behind her to complete the marathon that she'd started 11 weeks previously. And as we got closer to that line, the noise got louder and louder and louder. We turned the left onto Boylston Street. And we saw that finish line. We were running towards it, but then suddenly Nicole stopped. Five meters from the finish line, she stopped. She looked left, she looked right. She looked right, she looked left. And we didn't know what was going on. But suddenly, very slowly, the media on the right-hand side parted ways. And John Odom wheeled himself out in his wheelchair. Nicole passed him the baton. John held it aloft, and she pushed him over that finish line, finishing the marathon she'd started 11 weeks previously, symbolizing the end of our cross-country relay. But much more so, John Odom was able to reclaim that finish line as his own and to start replacing those negative memories with better ones. The relay changed him. It changed his life. And, but not only that, it changed the lives of everyone that took part in that relay. Every life was changed, whoever was holding that baton. And it changed my life. It was the moment I realized the power of community, the power of coming together, how we are worth so much more than the sum, than the sum of our parts when we come together. And last year, I was working with Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London's team in London, to break down gang culture. We created a 4,000-mile continuous running relay around the streets of London, and we had CEOs take part. We had builders take part. We had refugees. We had Somali women. We had Bangladeshi men. We had gang members. We had homeless people take part. And everyone united around this baton. And we raised 50,000 pounds for the youth of the city. But much more than that, we united the city. And I was having a conversation recently with a friend. And I was saying, I wonder if we can pass our baton around the world, 18,000 miles, powered by the running community, bringing countries together rather than pushing them apart, breaking down barriers and boundaries. I imagine an Israeli passing to a Palestinian. I imagine a Ukrainian passing to a Russian. Bringing people together rather than breaking them apart. And I, I know it's a, it's a huge idea, but if history has taught me anything, it's that together, we can create the incredible. Thank you very much.